Hey guys, Caesar here. Welcome to my cybersecurity YouTube channel. In today's video, I'll be working on my PC build. I'll be going through every PC part that I chose and hopefully provide a brief explanation on to why I chose that part. As always, if you liked the video, please like, comment, subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Before I get started, I'll quickly go over my old PC main specs. I'll be upgrading from an Intel Core i5-8400 at 2.80 gigahertz. For the GPU, I'll be upgrading from an Asus GeForce GTX 1060 with three gigabytes of VRAM and 16 gigabytes of RAM. And these are great parts for a budget PC build. Now I bought it pre-built back in 2018. So I've had it for five years now. I've always wanted to upgrade my PC about two to three years after I purchased it. At the time it was more mainly to keep up with um, modern PC games, but now I need it more than gaming. And I need it for school, um, cybersecurity competitions. I'm creating home labs with virtual machines, video production, like this video, for example, content creation, and hopefully work for IT. That's my goal for this year. All right, let's get started. All right, guys, so this is my full PC part list. And as you can see, building a PC is not cheap or a high-end PC, per se. You can definitely build a budget PC like the one I had. It cost me about between $600 to $800. Nowadays, it can run you about between 400 to 600 for a budget build. Once you reach like the 800 to 1000, that's more mid tier. And once you pass 1000, that'll be more towards the high end PC. And don't get me wrong, building this PC took me roughly two years, mainly because of COVID, uh, especially with the GPU parts. The prices skyrocketed up into the 1K for a 600 um, GPU. But throughout those years, I was purchasing part after part. It wasn't like all in one shot. I just spent 2K now. And then finally, after GPU prices came down, I found a great deal online. Actually, I found a rare gem, to be honest. I found it on the Facebook Marketplace. It was new and sealed in my local area. I thought it was too good to be true. So I went ahead and messaged the guy. I asked for, you know, information about um, invoices, serial numbers, all that, just to make sure it was a legit product. And it was. And it was still sealed when I went to meet with him. Of course, I opened it. Um, then and there, you know, just to double check again, I saved around $300 on my GPU. The guy was taking a loss, but he was really cool about it. Okay, for the CPU, I went with the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X, 12 core. As you can see right now, it's on the sale, 40% off at 340. That's a, honestly a great deal for a high-end CPU. And the reason I went with the AMD um, CPU is because of content creation. Um, I've heard many great things with uh, AMD, especially for content creation. All right, now to cool this bad boy, I went with a Noctua NHD15 Chromax dot black. It's a dual tower CPU cooler. And the reason why I went with the air cooler versus a um, AIO cooler, I was trying to go with a more simple, clean look. And this one really stood out for me. And it's a beast of a CPU cooler. For my motherboard, I went with the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Pro AC. It's an AM4 chipset. And the reason why I went with this motherboard, it had all the features I wanted to be specific. It supports dual channel for my DDR4 RAM. It also includes dual NVMe M.2 slots with thermal guards, which is these right here. And if I want to, I can attach the 802.11 AC antenna. Another good feature is the amp up audio driver for some really nice audio. Blazing fast 2.5 gigabit ethernet LAN switch, USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C and HDMI support. Another important feature was the Q Flash Plus. It updates the BIOS without installing the CPU, memory, and graphics card. And I had to do this before starting my build. Okay, onto the RAM. I went with G Scale Rip Jaws V Series, 64 gigabytes. They're two by 32 sticks, and DDR4 3600. And at the time, I got this for way less. It was close to $100. Another reason why I went with this brand, this RAM is is designed and suitable for most oversized CPU heat sinks. So going back to the CPU cooler that I went with, this is an oversized one. It's pretty big once you see it in person. For storage, you can honestly pick any any company, any brand. Samsung's a good one. Western Digital, this is what I went with. Specifically, WD Black SN770 M.2, one terabyte. My graphics card, I went with EVGA's GeForce RTX 3070 Ti, XC3 Ultra Gaming, with eight gigabytes of VRAM, GDDR6. And like I mentioned earlier, I got a heck of a deal on this one. I found it locally in my area, and I saved $300. This GPU will definitely support all the games I wanna run. And this will be my encoder for recording videos such as this one, content creation, video production, etc. All right, for the PC case, I went with Fractal's Design Mesh 5C. They now have a second version of this case with an up-to-date design. I was just looking through cases on, on YouTube, 
just doing my own research and I came to find this case here. It's a really nice case. So the airflow is pretty good in this case. On the front of the case, you can mount up to 320 millimeter case fans, or you can do two 140 millimeter ones. There's one in the back as well. And then you can mount someone on the top. And if you want to, you can do some in the bottom as well. Okay, for my power supply, I went with Corsair's RMX series 2021 version, the RM850X at 850 watts. And most importantly, it's fully modular. So meaning none of the cables are attached to it. As you can see here, it's fully modular and it says connect only the cables you need. And for my case fans, I went with Corsair's Air Series LED AF 120, 120 millimeter case fans. When placing case fans, you have to keep in mind positive pressure and negative pressure. So on the front of the case, I'm gonna have three of the 120 millimeter um, case fans. They're gonna be intake fans, so the air is gonna be blowing in. And this back one here will be an exhaust fan. It's gonna blow the air out. And here at, and at the top, I'm gonna have two additional um, exhaust fans that will be blowing the air out as well. And the air cooler will be right here in the middle and it's gonna blow it out this way as well. And lastly, to give my build some style, I went with Asia Horses sleeve extension cables and they pretty much attach to your power supply cables. Here's a good example of how it looks connected to the power supply. You run this extension and it comes out and it connects it to the motherboard. And you just have this cool look of, uh, of power cables. All right, that's all the PC parts. Now let's get straight to the build.